How Russia responds to Israel's attacks on Iranian targets inside Syria could make all the difference as to whether the region boils over into full-scale war or continues to simmer at its current, already dangerous, level. In an official statement last week, the special envoy of the President of Russia to Syria, Alexander Lavrentiev, indicated that Moscow was rapidly losing patience with Israel over airstrikes against alleged Iranian targets on Syria soil. Sooner or later, the cup of patience, including the Syrian government, may be overflowing, and a retaliatory strike will follow, which will accordingly lead to a new round of tension. These attacks must be stopped, they are counterproductive. We hope that the Israeli side will hear our concerns, including concerns about the possible escalation of violence in Syria. The language, though diplomatic, leaves little room for misinterpretation. By using the term, including, about the Syrian government losing patience, Lavrentiev left no doubt that the other, inclusive party was Russia. This linkage carries over into the not-so-veiled threat of a, retaliatory strike, and, possible escalation of violence. In short, Lavrentiev's warning was as blunt a threat against Israel that could be made short of stating the obvious, if Israel continues to bomb Syria, Russia will have no choice but to shoot down their planes. From the moment Russia dispatched its armed forces to Syria in September 2015 to prevent the collapse of the Syrian government of President Bashar Assad at the hands of US-backed Islamist terrorists, it has found itself at the nexus of competing geopolitical games. One of the main issues confronting Russia was avoiding conflict in its airspace between its air force and the anti-Islamic state coalition headed up by the United States. This task was complicated by the fact that the U.S. was really using the campaign to counter Islamic State is formerly ISIS, as a cover for training and equipping Islamist forces dedicated to the removal of President Assad. The U.S. also sought to leverage its influence with Syrian Kurds to create an autonomous region in northeast Syria that operated outside the control of Damascus. Iran is likewise deeply ensconced in Syria. Like Russia, Iran's involvement came at the explicit invitation of the Syrian government. Iran's Syrian engagement pre-dates that of Russia, indeed, it was Iran which helped convince the Russians of the necessity for intervention. As such, Russia and Iran have had common purpose when it comes to stabilizing the security situation inside Syria. However, Iran's involvement goes beyond simply helping Syria, and instead is part and parcel of a larger regional strategy built around the concept of an axis of resistance, which would further Iran's regional security and ambition. As such, Iran has used the Syrian conflict as a cover for facilitating military support for Hezbollah in Lebanon, both in terms of allegedly supplying that organization with precision-guided munitions capable of reaching Israel, but also establishing a de facto second front by helping Hezbollah establish itself in the Golan region of southern Syria. The Iranian actions have been deemed threatening by Israel, which has responded by undertaking a concerted campaign of airstrikes designed to destroy and deter what it deems to be malign Iranian activity. As such, Russia has taken a hands-off approach when it comes to Israeli military strikes against targets affiliated with any Iranian activity not directly tied to supporting the Syrian government. While Russia has repeatedly cautioned Israel about the destabilizing effect of its airstrikes, Russia has avoided making any direct threats against Israel. Lavrentiev's statement changes this calculus. By declaring that Russia's cup of patience will soon run out regarding Israel's actions in Syria, Alexander Lavrentiev has made it clear that Israel can no longer assume Russian inaction in the face of continued attacks on Iranian targets inside Syria. The question is whether Israel believes Russia is bluffing, or whether it can defeat any Russian actions in response to continued air strikes in Syria. In this, Israel would do well to reflect on Russia's recent history, bluffing is not part of the lexicon.